Hi, I'm Mike Halsey, the author of Troubleshooting Windows 7 Inside Out from Microsoft Press, and welcome to Advanced Windows 7 Troubleshooting. In this webcast, I'm going to be looking at a whole wide variety of tools and facilities within the operating system that you can use for preventing problems, diagnosing problems, and repairing them. I'm going to split this presentation into four different parts. In part one, I'm going to look at some of the tools that you can use to prevent problems from occurring in the first place. These include backup and virtualization tools. In part two, we'll look at some of the automatic and some of the simple uh, troubleshooting tools that are available in Windows 7 that anybody can use regardless of their technical ability. In part three, we'll look at uh, some of the more advanced troubleshooting tools and facilities that are available within the operating system. And then in part four, uh, this will be a, a demonstration on some of the uh, more advanced diagnostic tools that reside within the operating system itself. But we'll start with avoiding disaster. Now there are several tools in Windows 7 that you can use to uh, help avoid disasters from occurring. The first of these is complete PC backup this will create a, a system image, an image of your installed copy of Windows 7 that you can save to another hard disk, another partition on your hard disk, to an external hard disk or to a series of DVDs. And you can restore from it later. So you can, for instance, uh, install all of your software and install and update Windows and configure it how you want it. And then when you need to rest uh, restore from this backup, Rather than reinstalling the operating system from scratch and doing that all again, you just restore from this backup and then everything is there how you want it all configured. And it's very similar to third party software such as Acronis True Image or Semantic Ghost. But this is built into every version of Windows 7. It's free, you don't need to buy any additional software. Then there's Windows Update. This is extremely important that you uh, have it turned on and that you let it install critical updates. Um, there are some problems that we'll talk about uh, later that can be caused by Windows Update, but uh, you should uh, let it install important and critical updates. You should also look for recommended and optional updates as well, because these can include new drivers for your hardware and uh, updates for uh, other software such as Microsoft Office. Then there's application compatibility. Now I'm going to talk about this more in part two but you can right click on any program in the start menu and from the context menu that appears select properties and in there there'll be a compatibility tab in the window that appears where you can uh, run programs that ran fine in earlier versions of Windows um, with compatibility settings so that they will run uh, more, if, more efficiently and more effectively in Windows 7. But Windows 7 is more compatible with older software than any other version of Windows that uh, has come before it. And there are all sorts of additional uh, compatibility features that you can use, such as uh, Windows XP mode, which you can download free, um, which is a fully licensed copy of Windows XP that works in a virtual machine. And you can use that if you have uh, Windows 7 professional or above. But here I want to talk about uh, creating a virtual copy of Windows 7 that you can boot from on your computer. So let's have a look at that. Now, this is essentially creating a, uh, a file that contains a full copy of Windows 7 with all of your software um, installed in it that you can boot from. It's not like installing Windows 7 on your hard disk because it's not a whole series of files scattered around a um, scattered around your you know around a drive or partition on your hard disk. It's a single file containing all of that, a virtualized computer. Now this facility is available in Windows 7 Enterprise and Windows 7 Ultimate only, and uh, you will need a separate license and separate product key for the copy of Windows 7 that you virtualize. Now, the advantages are that you can boot into this virtual machine directly from the startup menu on your computer. 
it's uh, seamless in this regard it just appears in the uh, uh, in the boot menu and the end user wouldn't know the difference between a virtual machine and a an installed copy of Windows 7 on your hard disk it's easy to repair and it's easy to reinstall as well because you just boot into the standard copy of Windows 7 which you probably wouldn't be using on your computer and you could just uh, rename your original backup copy of your virtual machine or create another copy of it and you can be back up and running in minutes in literally just a few minutes for as long as it takes to reboot Windows a couple of times now some of the advantages are uh, firstly that unlike um, uh, Microsoft Virtual PC um, the virtual machine will have full access to the hardware resources on your computer and also it fully supports the 64-bit versions of Windows 7 which is again something the virtual PC does not. Now there are third party solutions that offer virtualization where you can run a virtual machine on the desktop but this will enable you to boot from a virtual machine and you really wouldn't know that you're doing it. It's an uh, excellent facility again as I say it's in Windows 7 Enterprise and Ultimate only and there's a full guide to how to do this in chapter 8 of my book Troubleshooting Windows 7 Inside Out so that's it for part one now we'll have a look at automated troubleshooting